Hello, welcome back to Blender CC Live. Today, I want to talk about Apple Object Capture API once again. So it's basically um, kind of an API that allows you to do 3D photogrammetry. Uh, um, all you need to do is like just taking photos of objects from multiple angles, um, in sequence or not in sequence, and you're going to end up with uh, 3D objects that you can preview and use in any 3D app or as AR. Okay, so there are already a few apps out there that's allowing you to do this without having to have Apple uh, developer account. But uh, I'm going to show you to you a couple of example anyway. So this is the mini house outside of the, the Gothic church, not too far from where I live. Um, this is just a small mailbox. And to take this one, what I did was taking uh, 46 different photos just around the objects. So the, the object capture API itself will be smart enough to make a cutout around the object. So it's, a, it's making all these kind of estimations and then try to reconstruct the 3D from this. Um, I can actually get closer to the objects and then taking photos and then keep going to add more details. So this is how I normally do it. Um, this one is 12 megapixels. There is a, but recently I've been uh, trying a different method. Um, this tattoo, for example, this is the one from, oops, from Botanical, Botanical Garden. This was actually a capture and reconstructed from video. Okay, Apple iPhone video can be, it's a, you can set it to 4K and this one was taken at 24 frames per second. And what I did here was actually extracting the video frame every five or every 10 frames. So this is originally a video and the focus is of course this uh, statue and I simply this is uh, extract the video using Blender. So the cutout is created, even it, uh, it removes all the background. Oops. Okay, so where's the video? Probably this video, yep. So this is the video. It is actually in HDR and I was using Blender to extract the video. The way I do it is um, yeah, this is the file here. I'm working inside a video editing. Uh, this is the VSE Blender video sequence editor, and I export it PNG, and then the step is five, and I rotate this video ninety degrees and scale it so it fits this portrait mode orientations you can simply drag and drop like a new video just to to do the same thing blender normally will do the one time calculations building proxies so we can scrub the video faster so this is the video we can Set it, rotate it 90 degrees, and then scale, oh, minus 90 degrees. Yeah, I think this is another example. This is the BMW Paris Dakar motorbike. And uh, you can see this is also, also a video, and I have the video somewhere here. Okay, this is the three. This is the video of the, of the, the bike. You can see. Um, I'm taking this video with portrait mode. I can do it landscape, but portrait also works. And this is, remember, this is a 4K video. If I command I, okay, this is almost almost 6 megapixel. So it's not 12 megapixel. However, with the Apple photogrammetry, you can actually get closer. So you can see I'm rotating around the car, uh, this motorbike and I can get closer to take more details around that area and keep going 
and all I did was uh, extracting extracting the video every couple of steps in this case every five frames based from original 24 frames per second I can get lower so I end up with like 600 or uh, I think with the bike I have around yeah almost 700 photos to reconstruct the 3d and the three also I, I try this three and then sometimes okay with the video you get a blur but it's it's still okay the API will be smart enough to capture the details so let's take a look at the bike here's oops It's, uh, it's opening Xcode. Oops. All right. This is how it looks inside Xcode. Actually, I prefer the preview. Scroll options to zoom in. It captures a lot of details. Of course, except the the wheel. Normally, for things like bike, it cannot really capture the wheels area. That needs to be something that you work on maybe add the details using blender you know just clean up it's it's still giving a pretty good reference if you are doing like a 3d and you want to recreate this uh, inside blender okay so that's the bite and the tree also with things like tree normally you you'll be capturing the the trunk and maybe the top area you just add some more details clean up the top part but you can get the trunk and the root so this is the result just from extracting the frame of the video and once you're done with it like for example with this uh, the statue we have this uh, nude statue us as usdz it's all usdz and you want to extract it you just copy paste so I'm making duplicate and with this duplicate I just change the USDZ extension into zip and then I simply extract it so we should have used this USDC that we can open inside blender so this is Blender 3.0 Alpha. We should have import USD Universal Scene Description. Go to the desktop. Let's take a look. With this selected, you might also want to import the USD uh, material if you can. Sometimes it doesn't work, but it's okay. Just try it. So this is the result. I think the material might not be exported properly. Okay, it does. This is the result and we have medium quality based on the video 6 megapixel per frames. It will actually take consideration of the angle as well. This tattoo is not totally straight. But we can fix it here inside Blender. something like this we can cut the base step two example now that's inside blender we can really uh, we can for example select hierarchy and then tap M move it into new collections okay and then we can shift a and then use the collection instance <clears throat> if you want to <coughs> create like a duplicate so we can study this tattoo now. Or oh, this guy have a texture. <clears throat> the quality quality is not bad actually. It's uh, almost perfect. Maybe you can clean up some area because it's already inside Blender. Now you can play around with the light, or you can put it in different three D scenes. 
something like this <clears throat> excuse me so you can um okay okay this is like a figure statue you can try okay let's see what i re normally like to do is to use grease pencil so let's create a let's do f3 and then line art this is i like to do this i often do this i create collection line art so there's a grease pencil here that's using the statue and generating outline so shift a create camera view align camera to align active camera to view so we have outline here i'll make like a square camera go to the view camera to view here i'm gonna lock the 3d camera to view and then start moving things around so with the line art this is live grease pencil we can adjust the edge thickness and we can observe the statue now like this <clears throat> with the outline only so this is a good study uh, really uh, you can you can trace or you can study this um, I will shift a shift a once again create a blank grease pencil so we have another grease pencil go to draw mode and we can start drawing I believe right click I will right click increase the strength and if we start drawing okay seems to be working it's probably a little bit thick set it to five but I like to use uh, this rough ink set this to five okay and start drawing you can look at this with the texture also to get more details you can paint on this statue or you can paint on the origin of the 3d cursor somewhere there and then observe observe this from multiple angle let's try if I'm using like a like a rough gestural drawing for the statue something like that I used to do live drawing so probably not the best but still it's fun to do this so this statue looks really quite beautiful from this angle and let's do another one using different frame I think let's try doing that Let's try look at this and then using my mouse I will do another single line gestural drawing I look at the face and the lips and then this neck part and then this so I yeah let's do this once again and the holding this kind of exercise is very very relaxing and it's a, it's a good therapy and because this is grease pencil it's also animatable if you like to let's try a full screen full screen is control options spacebar if you don't know would be really nice if this is like a I think if it's like VR mode, you can have more space and then you, your arm can do like a gestural type of drawing. Yeah, I think it's a VR and AR is going to be so useful for, for artists, I think. Yep, there's another gestural. You can, of course, uh, just draw on the surface of this character just switch the stroke placement to surface and then remove this offset and start adding details around the character
you don't need to do this I mean but still it's kind of a nice little exercise by tracing 3d you, you will actually kind of learn about the the form I don't know I think um, manga artists will totally love this idea it's really fun exercise to do, to be able to do this Statue, you can turn on and off. You can see the result. And the one that I just draw myself is that uh, the thinner line. Let's see. Fabric. Oh, no, there's uh, like marking around the area. This tattoo might be broken at some point. If I turn off the other grease pencil, we have this marking. <clears throat> Okay, the thickness seems to be different, but uh, you get the idea anyway. So, yeah, I think um, this ability to quickly generate 3D is really powerful. And you can really just share the USDZ into any iPhone or iPad. Anyway, the USDZ is kind of an open format. Um, and you can really play around with the shaders and things like that and you can create artwork this way let me do a quick render without anything else and I, I really like things like a gestural kind of drawing from different angle I think this is very expressive and yeah just a quick idea is what you can do uh, with your iPhone or iPad or any smartphone actually will work. Try using app like a Polycam or Meta Metascan app. You can generate and 3D capture using the photogrammetry method. All right, so yeah, hopefully you find this useful and interesting. Thanks again for tuning in and I'll see you next time. Thank you, bye.